tonight. From Empower Field at Mile High in Denver. It's a special prime time edition of the NFL on EA Sports. see Teddy Bridgewater and the Denver Broncos taking on Carson Wentz and the Indianapolis Colts. A terrific night for football as EA Sports takes us to Empower Field at Mile High in the capital city of Denver, Colorado. Just a short time ago, sounds loud enough to reverberate across the Rockies. They're ready for football in Denver as the Broncos get set to do battle with the Indianapolis Colts. Seems like we were just starting training camp, but here we are in October, and off we go on EA Sports. And they will elect to not bring this one out as our first drive will begin at the 25. So here are the Broncos now for their opening drive. They'll be taken out by the product of the University of Louisville, the talented Teddy Bridgewater. I've always loved Teddy Bridgewater. A lot of people have underrated him throughout his career. Remember, this is a guy who's battled back from a horrendous knee injury to find his way back as a starter in this league. More than capable right arm, tremendous leader. This guy knows how to make plays in the clutch. And he'll work this forward for about three at second down. Look, all any running back wants is a little bit of room, a little bit of space in order to maneuver. But he also understands how difficult it is for his offensive line up front. So if they give him any space, he realizes his job to make more out of it than what they give him. Picks up three on that carry. Call it a gain of a couple, and that's going to leave him with a third and about five. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big-bodied guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. Throwing is Bridgewater. This one complete to Jerry Judy. And he will have the Broncos first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. The slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. DeForest Buckner able to drop him for a loss of a couple. Like the footwork back there. I thought he did a pretty good job of evading that first wave of players. Tried to buy a little extra time out of the pocket, but in the end, oh, that was a tough one. Yeah, winds up getting buried for the loss. On second down, it's Gordon. Four yards on the pickup there, and now they're left with a third and eight. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball on that because usually you have the defense back on its heels. We just saw a nice example of why teams often bring in baseball guys to teach quarterbacks how to slide in key situations. You want to protect your franchise guy, make sure he doesn't get hurt. He did exactly that on that play. A perfect slide to avoid the big hit and pick up a first down. Two yards on the carry there, it'll be second down. And that's why you see a lot of teams that like to play 4-3 defense, especially against teams that run the ball really well, because you count on your defensive front, the tackles and the ends, to eat up the blocking in the offensive line and keep that guy in the middle clean so he can roam through the football and make a tackle. In this case, he introduced himself and said, hello, my name is Mike. Four yards on the pickup there as it'll leave him with a third and about four more for first. Throwing, Bridgewater. And that is incomplete. Oh, he had a defender right there with him to force that to the ground. And fourth down now coming up. Wow. 
The kick by McManus is good. And the Broncos, the first to grace the scoreboard. It's 3 zip. They were probably hoping to get him a little bit closer for a shorter field goal, but he was able to get it done from deep. Nice little tester for him to begin things, huh? I think he was hoping for a little bit more of a chip shot. Instead, they made him stretch it out a little bit, but he's got to feel great now that he put it through the pipes. And ultimately, he stopped right where he would have been if he had simply gone down to a knee at the 25. So the Colts now coming out for their opening drive. As we get a peek at the number two overall pick from the 2016 draft, standing at six foot five, Carson Wentz. And when you look at him, you see that he's got all the tools you want in a quarterback. The big frame, the quick release, strong arm, has escapability. The issue sometimes, tries to do too much, instead of just taking the throws that are available to him, and occasionally turnovers get him into trouble. down it'll set up a second and seven working from the gun Wentz he'll have a first down past the 40 and all the way up to the 46 you can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there it looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. First and 10, Taylor now. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Usually we see runs like this as the defense breaks down later in the game, but this guy set the tone early, running through all types of tackles and put the defense back on its heels. Wentz now on first down. That's complete to Jack Doyle, the tight end. Three yards the game there, second down. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. So a decent gain, but all for naught on the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked up by Alexander Johnson. And the Broncos are going to have the short field here as they'll take over right at the 50. And Brandon, this is a real nice job defensively of getting inside a quarterback's head and figuring out, okay, where is he going with the football? Because you can make an educated guess defensively, not all the time, but sometimes. And when you're right, you've got a decent chance of coming away with the football. So many times in my career, I've heard coaches talk about completions are one thing. But as long as we're there at the catch and we get guys on the ground, we can live with that. But if you're going to give up 10, 12, 15 yards after the catch, then your defense is going to be in a lot of trouble. And a five-yard gain as he's down inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. Second and five. They'll give it to Gordon out of the shotgun. Just a couple on the pickup there, and now it's third down. What an advantage having a elite guy in the middle of the defensive line because not only does he take up the space and let the linebackers run free, but he can also make plays himself, as we just saw there. He's got a man. It's Sutton that's complete. And he will have the Broncos first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. They had to settle for three last drive, hoping this second go around ends in six. In good position, first and ten. This is caught. Touchdown. Bridgewater fighting Cortland Sutton on the touchdown throw. And the Broncos 
will add on to their lead. On here, Brandon McManus for the point after. He's got it, and now it's a 10 and nothing.
to the line, ready to start their next drive. And following the pick six and the DC field position is throwing that pick six. You'll see how they attack this one. about because he had enough confidence in himself that that was a fluke and he went out 
played pretty well the rest of the day. And this throw a bit late as he couldn't reach back for it. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Now a toss right side. It's Gordon. And unable to get downhill there as he'll take this up to about the 37. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. To throw, Bridgewater. And a throw there, going to be incomplete. You can tell they wanted to get that ball downfield, but they had nothing working in the secondary, so he dropped it off to the running back. That one ended up incomplete. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. And this returnable for Hines. It'll be a 10-yard return following a punt of 45. And that will come the offense as they take over. Now Jonathan Taylor and the Colts offense retakes center stage. And Charles, you can't really fault him. He's over 100 yards already. He's not the reason they're losing. And that is really unusual because ordinarily, when you set the tone this way and run it this effectively, usually your team's in control. So it's a very strange situation. And you're right, you can't fault him. He's done a great job for his team thus far. Yes, and he's saying, feed me on the sidelines. Now will they continue to do it? To throw once more on second and 10, Ellinger. That's complete to the running back, Naheem Hines. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him? without weakening our overall defense. You're exactly right. It's a tough task to match up to him. 56. Off the play fake, here's Ellinger. Complete to Hilton. And now a fumble. The ball's out. The Broncos say they have it. They do. seen this before and we know coaches preach about this and work on it all the time catch the ball you know there's going to be some traffic somewhere they've got to put it away and secure it as they try and get downfield and that was off the mark behind him incomplete an incomplete pass on first down that leads to a second and ten now the handoff comes to gordon they get six. That'll leave them with third and four. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. Out right, this one goes to Patrick. And he will have a Broncos first down. They needed four. He doubled that. He wound up getting eight. As an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. But since they did, I guess the point is moot. And they're right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. 44 yards on the ground for him so far. The last run got nine. That leaves him with second and a yard. They run it here with Gordon. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. Exactly what they needed right there. Because they needed to use the ground game to take some pressure off because the quarterback's been struggling a little bit. Bridgewater now looking to throw on first. And that is incomplete. Now the coverage a little too good there. And it's second down. He did an okay job of absorbing the hit. Just couldn't secure the football through the catch. And he was right there on the spot and forced the incompletion. That's something defenders work on all the time. If you're there, make the contact. But continue to work your way through the receiver so they can't possess the football and turn it into a catch. This will be play number seven on the drive. Third and a yard. Off the play fake. Bridgewater. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Corey Willis coming in to drop it for a loss of eight. And also brings up fourth. Well, they only had a yard to go. They 
try to pass the football. Defense blitz. Defense got there. Yeah, I think on this one, this is probably good scouting, understanding a few tendencies and figuring out that, hey, they may take a shot, and he dialed up the pressure and got to him. And McManus able to put it through, and that'll make this a seven-point game. So they wind up turning the turnover into points as they convert there for three. Yeah, that was a nice job there to force the fumble. They recover, hand things over to their offense, and then the offense went down and got them three. That alone, that's not enough to win a game, but both units able to do their jobs on these last two drives. Now here's the signal caller getting ready to lead this offense again. He's got to dig deep here, doesn't he? Team's losing. He's not playing well either. And they always tell you, don't press. You'll make things a little bit worse. But in this particular situation, you try and heighten your play. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off by Justin Simmons. And he'll take this across midfield and inside the 45. So a costly penalty yardage-wise is that'll move the football down to the spot of the foul. And what the officials are looking for in these situations, whether you're playing the man or the ball, and if you're playing the man, you get a lot less leeway in terms of what's going to happen at the end of the play. But if you're looking for the football, it's less likely to draw the flag. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Working out of the shotgun is Ellinger. He's got Granson, his tight end. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and put the down marker back to one. And that's caught by the tight end, Granson. That catch good for only a couple. Second down and eight. From the gun, it's Taylor. And he was able to shed one tackle, but could not get away from there. Call it a gain of five that time, and they'll be left with a third and about four. They give to Taylor out of the gun, and they'll get him down about three yards short of the first. Now it's about called for by the defense as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Frank Reich, he didn't even seem hesitant about this. He wants to go for it on fourth down. Look at this, a tight end carry. And he picks up the first as he's able to take it down to the seven-yard line. Now the Colts going to burn the second of their timeouts as they'll get a chance to talk it over after picking up the first down. Taylor. Press this one forward as they stop it right around the one. He'll get six on the ground there, and it'll be second and goal coming up. When we talk about being on schedule, I think they're on schedule after that run, getting it right down there on the doorstep. Maybe even a little bit ahead, because now the defense can't dictate with pressure. They're guessing about where you're going to go. I might come right back at them with the same play, the same set, and see if they can stop them. They'll look to run with Taylor. And he will fight his way into the end zone for a touchdown. Jonathan Taylor with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Colts are an extra point away from tying the ball game here in the final minute of the first half. Extra point by Blankenship is up and good. And we are tied here in the second quarter. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And it was capped off by a Jonathan Taylor touchdown. Fitting for what's been a tight ball game. We're all even at 20 now as the kick's away. And Spencer will elect to not bring it out here. It's a touchback. The Broncos onto the field ready to start their next drive. And they've got a little over 40 seconds to work with if they want to try to put something together. And that's checked down to Gordon. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. 
Just a three-yard gain there. Second down at seven. And now a timeout defensively after that first down play. So they're going to make this offense sweat out half number one. Well, the white flag coming out as they line up to kneel on it. All that remains is to snap this once, and that'll do it for the first half of play. So we've reached halftime in a wild first half. We'll take a minute to catch our breath as we send you on out to our studios in Orlando. Here's Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, right, Brandon. Thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to this slimmed-down version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. We thought this one would be a close battle coming in, and we have not been disappointed. But they are all even to this point. So to see if either side can pull away, Let's get you right back out to Brandon and Charles for the start of the second half. Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. And ready to get the party started for the second half. It was an even first half, all tied on the scoreboard. Here's Rodgers to return. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Out come the Colts. They'll have it first here to start quarter number three. It's a tie football game here. What do you think, Charles, the message was at halftime? Well, I think that they probably just looked at things and said, we're fortunate that this is a tie game. No need to panic. No need to change a whole lot. We didn't play anything close to our best in the first half, so we don't have to go out and win one for the Gipper. Let's just go out and play our best football and win one for us. They'll be pulled down, and now a late flag will come with it. And that's in the area of the face mask, I think. Well, when you get an elite running back like he is, sometimes you've got to employ the by any means necessary method to get him down. Yeah, sometimes you're relieved even if a flag comes out. But if you just get the hand up and you get it on the mask, you can kind of get away with that. But as soon as you curl it around the finger or the hand, that's pretty easy for everyone to see. And they'll call that one every time. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. 56, Mike, 56, right there, right there. To throw is Ellinger. He's got Branson over the middle. The tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play, and that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver Get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball, but when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. And Brandon, you know that expression? He just does what he does. <laughs> it sounds trite, doesn't it? But in this case, it's perfectly apt. This is one of the better runners in the NFL. And all he does is just find avenues, find ways to pick up key first downs and big runs. Now a dump off here complete. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon. And it looks like they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. And that time, they pick up a first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover him before he gets going? He's down inside the 10 to the 8. And it comes on a gain of 8. 8 yards the gain on that last run. Here's second and a couple. Taylor. And here he'll get it down to the 7. Down on the field, we've got an injured Colt after that last play. We'll step aside and get a report when we come back to Denver. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he'll get into the end 
end zone. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Jonathan Taylor taking it in from seven yards away. And the Colts have taken the lead. He's got the hat trick now of rushing touchdowns. Also has his team the advantage. And I'm looking at it two ways here. If I'm on defense, I don't care what they do now. I commit as many people as it takes to slowing him down running the football. Even if they want to hit me over the top of play action, I just don't let him beat me that way anymore. And if I'm him, I'm in the huddle calling the plays myself. I don't care what play call comes in. I tell my quarterback, guess what? You're handing it to me again. And if I'm the quarterback, I'm saying, okay, that sounds good, right? <laughs> Smart quarterback. They will start at the 25 as Spencer elects not to return this. So now a look at the Broncos as they head back out there for their first possession of the second half. And this game was all square at halftime, but now they find themselves down seven following the opening drive touchdown here in the third quarter. And they need to take a good, relaxing, deep breath, don't you think? Because right now they might start to feel like they've got to play catch up here and start matching that point for point still too early to get there. They can still run their offense. Plenty of time to get back in this game. So quickly all the way up at the 40-yard line. Bridgewater now for Gordon on the draw. Stops shy of the 45 despite some powerful running. DeForest Buckner in on the tackle. Coming up on a second and six. They keep it on the ground again. Gordon. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line. Tackled there. That was good tough running right up the middle. And if the defense can't penetrate and make him slow his pace or change direction, that's often the end result. Let's go, defense. Let's go, defense. The busy night continues for Gordon as he gets it here. And that play goes. Absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. DeForest Buckner using that size to force his way in there and make the stop behind the line. After the loss, they'll come up second and 13. Now a handoff. This is Gordon. And he's dropped right at the 40. Game three. We know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. And he will have a Broncos first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Carry number 20 here for Melvin Gordon. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play there. Second down. Here's Bridgewater. to the ground incomplete a nice job of bodying him up defensively and now it brings up third down Bridgewater this is the tight end fan and he'll be stopped here well short of the first down at the 24 yard line they get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down Oh, it's time to give a little credit there to the defense. They played that very well because it was a drag route, and he ran it a little shallower than normal as he worked straight across the field. He was hoping he'd get lost behind the defensive line, but once he made the catch, nowhere to turn up field and gain any yardage. The kick by McManus is good. Response to that touchdown on the other side to begin the third quarter. Look, just three points, but still a response nonetheless. You're exactly right about that because I think you needed to answer back with something, even though it's not six. Just enough to send the message that says, hey, we're not going away. Now 
Jonathan Taylor and the Colts offense retakes center stage. I guess it kind of goes without saying at this point, but he's had a great game, as we like to say, a nose for the end zone, no doubt. Continues to find it throughout this game, and I'm sure he's got a nice place to live. He might want to make an offer on the end zone for a second home, <laughs> because that's what it's been like throughout this contest. He knows how to get there, and boy, he looks happy when he does. He's already bought all the property in the end zone. That's the problem. He's going to sell to himself now. And they will not get the connection there. It's incomplete. The coverage was good, but I just wonder if they absolutely fooled the quarterback on that play. I think he was expecting something else. Ended up with nowhere to throw the football successfully. Throw left side complete. That's Doyle. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. On fourth down, Ellinger. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. Boy, a curious decision to go for it. Doesn't pan out, and the Broncos are going to get the football back in great field position. Now Gordon on first down, and he'll work this forward for about three at second down. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. This is Gordon as they go to him again. And he's going to get this pretty close to a first down at the Colts 23. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. On third and one, here's Bridgewater. He's got his tight end fan, and he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. And in a lot of ways, that catch is expected. Red zone presence, and that one was realized there. You've got to find your tight end in that situation. First and goal, Melvin Gordon. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Denver score. His point after is good, and that gives him a three-point lead. A drive there of just four plays, and it's capped off by a touchdown run coming from Melvin Gordon. Rodgers going to return it from his end zone, and they'll get him down right at the 25-yard line for the same result, and he opted for the touchback. And he's set to go on offense once more. And last time this unit was out here, costly turnover, and then that turned into six points. They've got to make amends. And how many times have we sat in meetings with coaches and they use the term complimentary football? <laughs> offense take care of the defense, defense take care of the offense. That didn't happen on the last possession. This is a chance for them to pick themselves back up and help their team. Yeah, we'll see if they can recoup and recover. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. He continues to have a big night here under the lights carrying the football. And some guys prefer night games. For whatever reason, their bodies react a certain way. They love the spotlight. Maybe that's what it is. The best seats in the house, the ones where he's carrying the football for his offensive teammates, the worst seats, the 11 guys trying to tackle him on defense. So a first and 10 now in Denver territory at the 46. Ballinger to throw. He'll rifle this one deep right side. And oh, it'll be intercepted. Picked off by Justin Simmons. And the Broncos are going to get the football here as the ball will come out to the 20. Denver offense at the line, ready to go. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. All right, second down, Gordon once more. And he'll get up 
to the 22. Well, praise has to go to the guys at the offensive line because they've had a very nice, productive day running the football. How about that poor defensive line? They've been knocked around the entire game, and while they slowed them down on that run, can they continue to do so? Because they haven't had much success throughout this ball game. And this is going to be incomplete. And that's a really good job there defensively. They went into this possession knowing that they needed to get a stop. They're in a tight ball game, and they got it done. Great work to force the three and out. Got the football right back for their offense. They've got to go to the sidelines feeling pretty good about themselves and encouraging their offensive mates to get some points. So possession goes over here on the punt, and the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Trying to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. Pryor has it complete. And he goes out right around the 39. That'll give him eight that time, and it'll make it second down. Now a give to Taylor. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook, go play action, toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down, keep the sticks moving. On first down, it's Ellinger. And that'll be incomplete. Fair to say, it hasn't been his best game throwing the football, but also not getting a lot of help out there either. Yeah, you kind of, you nailed it pretty well, you know? He's got to throw it better, got to get more help. Obviously one that should have been caught. They got to find a way to bring those, those two elements together so they can make some progress in this one. So they'll give a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we play three quarters. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. The Colts on third down. They've converted six times and could use a seventh here. This time it's third and three. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. So after three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. Strong running at the 30. And he's going to get this inside the 30. That time, the right guard sending him backwards. And so many different types of guys rotate in on the defensive line now, depending on situations. You can get the bulky guy, the fast guy. No matter what, though, you can't hold him. Give him five yards there, and it'll bring up second down. Here's Ellinger. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. Well, any caused incompletion is good for a defense. But when you add to it, you get a little hit on the quarterback, knock him to the ground, make him think a little bit, hopefully knock him off his game, especially in a game of this magnitude, this tight in the fourth quarter, you got to feel pretty good as a defense. Another carry for their leader and a good one. It's crunch time. They'll need him to continue to be productive in both the run and passing game in order for them to try and snatch a victory. Back to Taylor on first down. And he'll be brought down. Oh, that's a face mask. Certainly looked like it indeed. Here come the flags. Face mask. Defense. Well, when you're leading in the fourth quarter, that's not the penalty you want. Not at all, and now your discipline comes into question. Having poise this stage of the game, you can't have those kind of points. And he takes this one in for a Colts touchdown. Jonathan Taylor, a six-yard touchdown run. And the Colts are once again going to retake the lead. And that rushing touchdown, his fourth, puts him just one shy of the NFL record in a single game. And we all know he would love to get to that record and even beyond it. But he doesn't need to in order to impress in this one, does he? What a, what a performance. What an absolute great game that he's had here in this one. Sanchez now. He'll kick it away following the touchdown. 
And Spencer will elect to not bring it out here. It's a touchback. So the Broncos coming out now. And they will be looking to answer the touchdown. Their defense just surrendered. Still a good chunk of time remaining here in the fourth quarter and a chance to regain the lead in a tight one. On first and ten, Bridgewater. That's out to the flat for Gordon. They showed off a nice juke of the defender before the next wave could bring him down. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. And that's the way to do it. Hand it to someone with vision and good footwork, and they add a little bit of power, and you find a way to pick up first downs. First down, Bridgewater. Flush to his right. Oh, he's got a little daylight. But he is out of bounds inside the 35. A big play there on the keeper. Looks to me, partner, like he's learned a little bit because earlier in the game, I think he was trying to force a lot of throws into some windows that just weren't open. Yeah, the interceptions had plagued him, especially a second interception, really a bad throw. So maybe a better decision there. Yeah, no doubt about it. I think he learned from earlier in the game, and he's applying it now. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. This ball tipped, and it's going to be incomplete. Fortunate maybe to get that back. It's third down. They'll try and run it. Here's Gordon. Boy, no chance as he was met and dropped behind the line there. That'll back him up two yards and also bring up fourth. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through, but that's Oh, and Bridgewater intercepted for the third time. down they felt compelled to go for it and he throws the INT yeah he knows that you can't take a sack there so he had to try and force one in now, this might not be a throw he makes it for in the second quarter but he had to take a chance there and this one wound up being intercepted they work this well up field across the 45 well that's a carry they have to be satisfied with and throughout this game they've been satisfied with what he's given them whenever they've needed a big run a first down He's the guy they've turned to, and it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. Now look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Picked off by Pat Sertan. establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later, and let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. Over the move to his left. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. As a rookie quarterback, that's exactly how you endear yourself to your teammates. Give it up for the cause. It's also how you end up on the training table, too. Yeah, it's a catch-22. Coach doesn't like it. Teammates love it. Where do you fall? Well, I fall on wanting to endear yourself to your teammates, but pick your spot. Be smart about it. They need you for the full season. Yeah, the rookie's going to learn as he goes. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. 
They go to the ground again with Taylor. If you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball back up the people up front. Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. On third and short, going with their tight end. And he is going to have a Colts first down by a couple of yards as they're able to get four there on third and two. All runs on this drive so far. It's first and ten. On the handoff, this is Taylor. on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving. And a little floater there is incomplete. Trying to get that one to his tight end and they've been trying to get the ball to him and as of yet, unable to successfully complete one. But you know there's usually a nice comfort zone in throwing to the tight end. Great sight lines usually right in the middle of the field. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves him with third and nine looming. This has been an up and down, back and forth type of a game, hasn't it? Maybe this long drive take a little bit of the wind out of their sails. Kind of settle things down a little bit. From the gun on third down, Elliger. And this is the coverage there on third down as that was not an easy one to hold on to. in the NFL the last few years, and that one might just rank right up there. And you know you can hear the crowd react, right? But I was focused in on the sideline and watched them absolutely erupt. I don't know how many of them thought he was actually going to make that kick, but how about how they felt when the ball went over the post? They will touch the 25 as Spencer elects not to return this. It's set to go here. Teddy Bridgewater and company marches back onto the field. And the passing game, I mean, look at the numbers. It's falling off. Sometimes you look at the quarterback. When the quarterback starts to struggle, who goes over and picks him up? Yeah, that was a big one, isn't it? Usually, there's a quarterback whisperer somewhere. And what I mean by that is, whether it's an assistant coach, whether it's one of his best friends on the team, someone that can get in his ear, get with him, and say, all right, my man, what do you need? What's going on here? So there's one person he can lean on. He's got to lean on that guy right now. It certainly didn't appear that that's where he wanted to go with the ball initially, so he tried to get something out of it by dumping it off to his running back unsuccessfully. Bridgewater to throw it. And that is incomplete. And the other day they told us, well, we've got third and five or less. We have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity missed there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point. And they liked some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them. Able to do so on that play. It's a 45 yard punt, just a one yard return. And possession will switch hands first and 10. The Colts now, their offense works their way back onto the field. Excellent job by their defense to force the punt and provide them with this opportunity all tied in the fourth quarter. Pretty good results here on the first down run as he takes this forward for about six. Four yards remain. sustaining the blocks, too. I'm seeing guys get six, seven yards downfield before there's even a hint of contact. Allinger to throw on first down. And the Broncos get there and take him down. But that's going to use the first of their timeouts. It's just their first going down to two remaining as we step aside here in the fourth quarter. Now, following the sack, they'll come up here on a second down and 12. Freed up the D lineman to make the play. An important play right here, third and ten. And I would 
has been pressure here. And he's going to hook up with his big tight end. Complete. He may gain of eight, but it also lead to a fourth down. Get down to the good stuff. All tied with two minutes remaining on EA Sports. So the Colts in possession of the football as we get your reset. And they're looking at fourth down now in this tie ball game. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. And that went to the good run tally right there. He's been strong throughout this game. And there's no reason to suggest he's going to slow down in the fourth quarter at all. And that's exactly what they need him to do. Keep churning out first downs. First and 10, Taylor now. He's corralled before getting it inside the 35. Now the Broncos are going to call the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. They'll run with Taylor. A pretty decent gain on the top run before he's brought down at the 25. Head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Second and two. On the handoff, Taylor. And he'll take it down here to shine the 15 at the 16 yard line. Now the Broncos will use their third and final timeout. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. zone now. They'll look to throw. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. Draymond Jones able to get him for a loss of about three. On oh, second down now. It's Taylor. And they'll get to him just inside the 15. Even after the strong run we just saw, they're able to corral him quickly defensively. Nickel set defensively for the Broncos here on third down. Now the timeout will be called, so they're in field goal range with three seconds left. Every eye in the stadium fixated on Rodrigo Blankenship. State will celebrate tonight as the Colts have won it. Well, Charles, it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that they did. Boy, were they clicking on offense. They can't help but feel great about themselves, can they? I mean, what a game to put up that number of points, continually feel like they're moving the ball and things are working and clicking. They think that they can bottle this and carry it with them. And as an offensive coordinator, you just don't think you can do anything wrong. Whatever you call, run, pass, it's all going to work. That's called being in the zone. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hard-working men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaunt. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. From Denver, good night, everybody.